So Rollos has added a new beta feature called Script Capabilities. And what this update is about is that you are now allowed to create sandbox containers in Roblox Studio. And what this exactly means is that, for example, if you have a server script inside of a model, it's not going to run if you have an option set on the container to only allow local scripts. But I'm going to go into more detail in this tutorial. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. So right here we have the Script Capabilities Preview Client Beta the forum Post, where the Roblox staff is saying that Today they would like to announce a preview release of the script capabilities, which is a new feature designed to give you finer control over actions that scripts can perform in your experience. And what are these script capabilities? And this system works by transforming an instance and its children inside of a data model into a sandbox container. And with this new container, you can basically limit the access of instances outside of the container, configure access to Luau and Engine APIs, as well as limit in one context, the scripts are allowed to run. And this unlocks some cool functionality, including improved security of untrusted code. And with this one, you can, for example, limit what models that are taken from the toolbox can do. More broadly, you can limit the capabilities of user-generated content inside your experience, even those that contain scripts. And there is also a point about reducing attack vectors with inexperienced scripting, where you can ensure a better security for experiences that allow players to write and run their own code. And this is mostly for, for example, a if you have a Lua teaching a game where you allow users to run code in basically restricted environments. So this just gives another layer of security. And you can also build more secure libraries, where you can share libraries, which restrict what they can do to themselves. And for example, a library providing more math methods can be restricted to the smallest set of capabilities that it basically needs. So other developers using the library don't have to validate the whole secure code to make sure it doesn't include additional actions beyond those. And before I move with this the forum post, a lot of people may think that this update will be basically for something like preventing exploits. And it kind of seems like that on the first hand, but this update is really mostly about, for example, toolbox models containing viruses or backdoors. So it technically prevents exploits, but not in the way that you would think of. And I also have some points basically that I ask that I'm gonna show later because this update can be really promising if they can manage to tweak few things. But basically on the ready to try script capabilities, this basically tells you how to enable the beta feature, which I'm also going to show later. Where in order to be able to configure instance properties associated with this feature, a workspace setting has to be switched from default to experimental. And the setting is the sandbox instance mode under the behavior tab. And this setting exists to ensure that this feature is not used by accident while it is still in the client beta stage. And once the beta stage is completed and the details of this feature have been finalized, this step will no longer be required. And this now tells you that you can basically use this in released games, but it's not really advisable since they can make changes that are not backwards compatible. But now let's move to the enable any container paragraph, which says that once the workspace property is enabled, you will see new options on a folder, model and script instances, and also any classes derived from those. So here is an example showing the properties of a folder, where you have the permission tab now, and the capabilities as well as the sandbox checkbox. And any of these classes can now become a sandbox container. So enabling the checkbox limits the actions that the script inside the container can perform and what instances they are allowed to access based on the set of values inside the capabilities list. And here is on how to customize the capabilities of instances in the container, where finally you can select the capabilities you wish to be available inside the container, where by default, scripts inside will not be allowed to run, and you have to enable the run client script or run server script capabilities. So with this one, if you for example have a model that you take taken out from a toolbox, and it would say that this model contains scripts, but really it would only be some kind of a, let's say, lamp post that shouldn't really have any scripting, you can basically just select the lamp model, enable the sandbox container, and you will have the run client scripts or run server scripts disabled. So you don't have to worry about the model basically putting viruses into your game. And now additionally access to any instance outside the container will be prevented, unless otherwise required. And we recommend keeping this default isolation mode and building packages that can communicate through bindable events and functions. Access to all instances can be restored by selecting the access outside right. But this basically weakens the isolation guarantees. And finally, capabilities for Luau and Engine APIs can be selected, where if the script attempts to access something for which it doesn't have the capability, an error message will be reported also including the information on the missing capability name. And not everything is available though, some of the APIs have not been assigned a capability yet, and some of the higher risk ones are 
not planned to be made available in a sandbox environment, especially access to properties affecting the whole experience. Where this could be for something like maybe the lighting service properties, or even the workspace properties as well. But continuing, for these APIs you will see an error message mentioning an unassigned capability. You will not find this capability in the list, but we know that a few popular APIs are still missing, so please leave messages here if you want to use this system but cannot access something specific, so basically asking for feedback. And we finally have an example right here, where as an example you can insert a model into the experience and only provide access to limited capabilities, where you have the untrusted model right here, with some kind of a torch detector part and a server script that you are not sure what it does. And you can basically like I said set the capabilities, where for example you can disable the script run, but there is also the difference of like the mentioned access outside right, the asset require load strings script globals the create instance, as well as the basic capability, and audio and the data store. But the layer of security for the script, in this case, would be disabling the asset require, because this script would technically require other assets that would basically do something malicious. Where even if the script does something malicious, like fetching more series by asset ID, it will error an attempt to execute that. Where here you can actually see that the script is fetching a suspicious asset, and then later on it printed out in the console that the current thread cannot require using the asset ID, lacking capability asset require. And it doesn't matter how obfuscated the script is, even if it doesn't look like there is a require, data store access or something else in there, it will be prohibited. And here is an example of maybe like a really well hidden backdoor, which doesn't contain the word require, or even the data store service, where the output says that the current thread cannot access the data store service, lacking the data store capability. And for the full description of the features along with the details on each capability and system restrictions, visit the documentation page. And I already went into it, right? And trust me that there is a lot to basically read about it. But it's worth checking out for something like for example the nested containers. When for example one sandbox container is nested inside another, the instance of the inner container are accessible to the outer one. And this tells you about the mixed capabilities, as well as the same sandbox capabilities as well. As well as few different nodes on the require and run client script and the run server script capabilities. But I'm going to leave links to everything in the description, since I don't want this video to be like 30 minutes long. But there is also the API dump changes, and this is for people who build tools around or simply watch the API dump. You can see the changes in the JSON file related to the capabilities, and more than one capability might be required to access an API. Where you have the capabilities for read access on the animation, and the security on the read and write access to. And this one is also for an accessory type, which has the avatar capabilities. And now lastly there is the important notes, saying that this is a beta feature so adjustments may occur based on your feedback. And we'll be actively monitoring the use of the script capabilities and making improvements as needed. And also please report any issues you find or suggestions you have as comments on this post. And I actually left few questions while also suggesting something, basically right here. Since we are able to make an isolated container, doesn't going to have any access to the outside, but I was also thinking what if we had a container that anything from the outside can have direct access to. For example, different scripts won't be able to access any instances in a set container. And my thought process behind this one is mostly for exploiting. We can really make any client-sided endi cheats because an exploiter can just disable or delete them. So if you have a folder that can have direct access from the outside and can only be communicated through, for example, by navigate events, an exploiter is not going to be able to basically delete the scripts in the container because they are basically not going to have access to it. And I also asked another question, would it be possible in the future to disable the ability of changing any of the containers and each children's properties? both through scripting and maybe manually. And again, this is mostly going to be for the exploiting point, but also, if you are working in a team, for example, and you don't want different people to basically mess around with your stuff, where someone could accidentally break or maybe change something. And also for another example on this one, if you are doing, let's say, commissions for a person, and they are hiring a lot of different developers, some of them might accidentally have a plugin, let's say, or maybe use a model that's containing viruses, and they also haven't used the capabilities feature. The viruses that, for example, just spread around a game, basically won't be able to inject themselves into your and other people's work, because this is going to give, like I said, another layer of security. 
But yeah, that's going to be about it for the deform post. So let's just jump into Roblox Studio and I'm going to show you how to use the script capabilities feature. Well, now I am in an empty base space right now. And to enable the script capabilities, I will need to go into the workspace. And under the behavior tab, I should have the sandbox instance mode right here, where I can change this from default to be on the experimental. And basically, if I, for example, just insert a part and group it, I should have another permission tab right here under this model, where I have the sandbox option as well as the capabilities. And I can actually write something here, so, so let's see what happens if I, for example, input basic. And it's going to select the basic option. So this is just an input box that you can simply write in instead of having to scroll through all of these different capabilities. But I can also select different stuff like the run client scripts, the run server scripts. And there is also the access outside right, the asset required, the load string, the script globals, the create instance basic audio data store network physics, UI, CSG, chat, animation, avatar, input, as well as the environment and remote events. And some of this stuff basically gives you information whenever you hover over it, where for example if you hover on the audio, it allows access to the audio related instance APIs. But the difference like the UI, CSG, chat, animation, they don't give you the information. So let's say that I had a run server script enabled and I actually inserted a server script into this model where I simply can do local model is equal to a script.parent and then the local part is going to be equal to the model.part. Well, let's say that I can, for example, set the part that color to be black where if I actually do a run test now, it's going to change the parts color to be black. But let's say I went back to this model and disabled the run server script capability, where if I do a run test now, it shouldn't technically be working. Oh, that's because I didn't select the sandbox option, so that's my bad. So now if I do a run test, it's going to give me a warning saying that cannot serve server script and the name of the script lacking capability run server script. So if I were to search for example for a model and inputted the doors entity figure ragdoll where I wouldn't really be trusting this model since it seems to have a lot of different scripts in different body parts and I would have to manually check every single one of these scripts to basically just see if it for example had something like this where this would be like a require and then a random asset ID since a lot of viruses hide it like this I will need to go through every single one of these body parts and basically just check for that. But instead, if I only wanted to have a model, I could simply just enable the sandbox and it's not going to have any of these capabilities or permissions. So if I do a run test now, it said that cannot start server script and the script, lacking the capability to run the server script. And it's basically for all of these scripts in the body parts, where we are going to be left with basically this. So yeah, that's basically going to be everything for the script capabilities overview. So as usual, leave a like and sort of support the channel, and also check out my Patreon page, but that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching, hope you're on the next day, and see you guys.